Hi there, and let's get to it. Today we're looking at importing media. In the previous interface video, we saw that we navigate our computer using the list of scratch disks available to us in the left-hand corner of the library. So I found a short film that was recorded over two days on three rolls. I can add a single clip by clicking and dragging it down into the media pool. I click Command-Z to undo that, and I'll demonstrate how to import multiple clips. So I can click on an empty area of the library panel and then click and drag across multiple clips. And similarly, I can simply click and drag them across into the media pool. I could also go up the hierarchy, right click on top of my roll one folder and add the folder into the media pool. If I go up one more step, I can choose the entire day. However, that hasn't imported anything. And that's because there's technically no clips inside of this folder. So what I have to do is make sure that I right click and choose add folder and subfolders into media pool. That means that it won't just be adding footage that's inside this folder, but it will also be adding the footage that's inside the folders that are inside the folder. Uh, but notice how it ignores the folder structure that I had originally created on my drive. So once again, I'm going to undo this command Z. And this time I'm going to right click, I'm going to add the media in the folder and in its subfolders, but I'm also going to create bins to reconstruct the original folder structure. So now you can see that the clips for roll 2 have appeared inside the media pool, but if I go on the left hand side I can now see that roll 1 is right above it, and the date of the shoot above that. You can choose to drag and drop folders themselves, but Keep in mind that this will also ignore folder structure and simply import all of the clips inside. So that was pretty simple. Let's take a look at a few other things you can do. I've opened up a wide shot of the first scene and I'm going to enable metadata on the right hand side. Now I can tell that this scene goes on for 1 minute 25 seconds, but let's say this scene actually went on a lot longer. Let's say this was like a 5 minute take. and there was something about the setup of the scene in which the majority of that footage is unusable to us. So let's say the crew had to set up the camera in a hard to reach position and they pressed record and then they all had to scatter uh, and wait for the scene to play out in the distance and then come back and turn the camera off. And out of those five minutes, there's only really about 20 seconds of usable footage. In that case, rather than importing this incredibly heavy clip, you might choose to indicate which portion of the clip you want to bring into the media pool and simply create a subclip. I'm going to control the playhead in my jog bar at the bottom and I'll use the symbols in the bottom right hand corner to indicate my in and out points from the clip. I can right click and say create subclip and there we go. I'm going to complete importing the rest of the film Removing clips is as easy as selecting them and clicking backspace on your keyboard. You can of course do this by clicking and dragging across multiple clips, or you can click and hold control or command on your keyboard and select non-contiguous clips. One last thing is I want to talk about the dialog box that you sometimes get if you import media that doesn't match the frame rate of your current project. If I was to get rid of all my media and then say change my frame rate to a different frame rate incompatible to this project, when I try to import these materials, I'm going to see the following dialog box. The clips have a different frame rate from the current project settings, which is true because the clips are 24 and the project is 30. The frame rate is something you cannot change after you've created a project. So I now have this decision to make. I can either change my timeline to match my footage, which is a logical step because it means that my footage will play back in the correct time frame, or I could specify don't change to the timeline, which means that my footage will now be conformed to the different frame rate. And this footage that was captured as 24 FPS will play at 30. The only case in which I might select don't change is if I'm working on a documentary and I know that I'm going to be juggling lots of different frame rates. Thank you very much for listening and I'll see you next time.